Hey class, so uh, I'm at the Newburgh Bakery recording this video, so if you hear some background noise, um, that's why. But anyway, uh, some people have been asking about problem 40, the diver problem, uh, which is a pretty tricky one because in this case we're given a final velocity and angle as the diver enters the water, but we want to figure out her initial velocity. So it's a little different than what we normally are given. Um, so we know about the final velocity, which is represented with the arrow down here. And we know this height here, which I've called H, which is given to you in the problem statement. And we also know this final angle, which is also given in the problem statement. And we're trying to figure out the initial velocity of the diver. So, as always, we should start by going through the different variables we're given. So, initial x position. Well, if we add axes to our problem statement here, maybe I'll add them in yellow. If we add axes, something like this, then our initial x position would be zero. Our final x position would be some distance, maybe I'll call it d that we don't know, so that would be this distance here. We don't know and we don't actually care about what that is. Our initial x velocity, we don't know. And our final x velocity, we can figure out based on what we're given, we can determine that it's gonna be the final velocity v that we're given multiplied by the cosine of the angle theta. Again, if we look over here at our velocity, this would be our x component, this would be our y component, and this would be our hypotenuse. So our x component would be the cosine. Similarly, I'll just fill it out now since we just realized that, that the final y velocity would be v times the sine of the angle theta. Again, that is the v given here and the angle given, so we know that as an actual number if you wanted to calculate it. And lastly, the acceleration in the x direction is zero meters per second squared because we're assuming freefall. So straight away, since our acceleration is zero from our first equation of motion, we can already determine that the initial velocity in the x is just going to be the same as the final velocity in the x, which we're already given. So that's cool. Now if we look in the y direction, we know that our initial y position is the height h, and the final y position is zero when we hit the ground. The initial y velocity we do not know, and the y acceleration is going to be negative 9.8 meters per second squared, or negative g. So at this point, in order to get the total overall initial velocity, we know initial velocity is going to be equal to the square root of the initial velocity in the x squared plus the initial velocity in the y squared. So really all we need to find our initial velocity is our initial velocity in the y since we already know the x component. So based on the variables given to us, if we look over here, we know what our final y velocity is and we know our change in position and we want our initial y velocity and we have our acceleration. So I would recommend using the equation of motion Vy final squared equals V initial y squared plus 2 times the acceleration times the change in y position. So from that we should be able to figure out our initial y velocity. We already know what this is. We know that the change in height is just going to be h, or technically negative h, since we're going down, and we know our acceleration is negative 9.8. So if you solve for this, you should be able to find your y final velocity and plug it in over, or sorry, y initial velocity, plug it in over here to get the overall magnitude, and to find b, the direction, you can just use the inverse tangent function. So I'm going to leave it there and let you guys do the rest of the work. I just wanted to help you get this one set up. Let me know if you have any questions.